Hey guys, it's Carissa, as you know, and I'm here with Jeremy Chow, my longtime friend. We haven't talked for a long time, Good but morning. he's pretty famous and you should check out his work, Jeremy Chow Photography. His work is amazing. He does film and it's all high-end clients, which we're going to talk about later. But welcome, Jeremy. So good to uh, connect with you. Hey, good morning. Good to see you again. <laughs> good morning. It's been yes. a while. <laughs> yes, it's been a while. When's the last time we've seen each other? Dude. I, <laughs> I don't. Remember. I don't it's, uh, oh my god! Actually, it was in like person. It was like Erich Chen's like like. It's got his birthday or party or something. Yeah, it's yeah. Got, it's a long time ago. I don't know. It's how been a your, while. Yeah. How are your girls? How are your daughters? They're fine. They're they're old now. They're oh, actually one of them's a high school junior now. So and she drives. Oh, wow. oh my god! That's <laughs> yeah, so she scary. drives. Yeah, she's turned turn to drive me around. It's a little scary. And the other one's in middle school. She's in eighth grade. Uh, and then she'll be in um, uh, high school next year. So, so yeah, I know oh they, 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 they get a lot older. So. Yes, I know. I know like me, me and you don't talk much, but I do. I have been following you since I started wedding photography. So I kind of watched them grow up. Yeah, I mean, I started, uh, gosh, like 12 years ago now. So they were only like four and two when I started. Yeah, people people told me that they like they, we watch them grow up. Yeah, and they're so cute, little hopper. Yeah, no. <laughs> cool so what have you been up to lately like during pandemic and now what do you i mean i follow you on instagram and i see you always do amazing work but what's like the life of jeremy chow right now yeah so i mean 2020 i think it was, you know with a lot of people it's definitely uh, a struggle for most people in the industry because we just we were basically shut down by the government um mm -hmm. <laughs> and it didn't pick up pick back up until I, I said middle 2021 for most of us uh until the restrictions were lifted um i was i was especially impacted because most of my work is uh destination and international weddings mm -hmm. uh, so obviously mm -hmm. i couldn't travel <laughs> so uh international wedding i couldn't you know so i basically was completely completely shut down from march 2020 until September 2020. So like for six, seven months, I didn't shoot any wedding. Like I didn't wow. shoot anything. Yeah, so it was pretty tough. Um, but you know, it slowly came back a little bit. But early, early 2021 was still kind of you know slowly. And then 20 middle 20 June 2021, especially in California, things started opening back up. So the second half of 2021 has been super busy. Uh, 2022 looks uh, pretty amazing so far. I'm start traveling again. So. Um, I just came back from Houston and Mexico. So like definitely international weddings is coming back. Um, so last year during the downtime, I was actually able to record an, um, an online course, uh, oh. for my, enti my entire workshop basically is now online. So, oh, wow. um, so yeah, so that, that's, uh, that, that was kind of one exciting project I actually knocked out during the pandemic. <laughs> what did, what, what's the course about? Uh, it's basically my my in person workshop, but the uh, but it's hundred percent online. So uh, I worked with a video video uh, crew that they taped uh, basically my my lecture, my uh, class, my lecture, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Um, it's broken with different sections, just like you would in the in person workshop. Uh, and they were they also followed me to a style shoot I did in Utah, actually Park City, Utah. Um, they followed me behind the scenes. Basically, I talk about how. I interact with models, like what you know, what I look for when I shoot, uh, how do I shoot details and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited about it. Um, it's up wow. right now. Yeah, so it, uh, that's kind of one of one big project. I wasn't going to talk about it, but that was kind of the one big project that uh, I knocked out. That I was super super happy about. Congrats! Did you launch yet? Thanks. It's launched. Yeah, it's launched. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just to tell the audience that they don't know you, if they're not familiar with you, you've been doing workshops um, or hosting workshops for a long time, ever since uh, you started, right? Uh, yeah, I think I think my first workshop was back in 2012 or 2013, I think. So yeah, it's, I've, I've been doing them for a while. And then um, I usually do one or two a year, depends on my schedule. And I've done, uh, usually, uh, when I first started, it was just in California, but now it's ex expanded to uh, Taiwan and I did uh, in Italy and all over the United States. Now I've done, I don't know, DC, Atlanta, Palm Springs. Um, wow. I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you've been yeah, around the world. Been, <laughs> yeah, it's been all over. It's kind of be all over, all over the place. So uh, obviously, again, this year because COVID, I haven't been able to do um, you know in person workshop. I just don't feel like that was the right thing to do. But I think next year, um, definitely a lot more. Uh, exciting things will be 
planned next year. So yeah, everyone's like watching Netflix and chilling, and Jeremy Chow is making like courses. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I do watch Netflix too. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, I turn my whole business to a course too, but um, that's what we do. The hustle mentality. We don't. Yeah. We don't yeah, like to slow, slow down. Yeah. Too, yeah, we don't like to slow down for too long. But um, I was gonna say, ask you like. Tell us a little bit about your Facebook group, Wedding uh, California Wedding Professionals, Southern California Wedding Professionals. Um, how many members and how you got started with it? Oh, so I don't know if you know this, but I'm, I, I don't run a group anymore. So yeah, um, I know you don't run it. But I, you start, started, yeah, right? I, st- I started a group maybe. Oh, geez, long time ago. Yeah, like maybe eleven years ago now. Yeah. So um, <laughs> basically, I, yeah, I don't, I don't even realize how old I am until I start talking about this. <laughs> Um, so I basically started because I was kind of frustrated with the how the industry was at the time. So I mm. think when I started the industry at the time, it was a lot of kind of, I mean, it's still a lot of drama, a lot of just, you know, kind of cutthroat practice and all that. And then my thing was always, you know, rising tide uh, lifts all boats. So I really want to start a community where, you know, everybody can just jump in and we all help each other. doesn't matter what kind of level we were at, how, many, how long we've been doing it. I, I, I'm a true believer. Everybody has something to offer uh, to to help. So, started a group basically just hey, you know, any kind of business question that you have, just go in and you can ask questions without judgment. Um, you know, it wasn't one of the groups where people just go and post photos. Basically, hey, like my photo. So, like, because I feel everybody's work will get better in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think more, what's more important is the business aspect thing. So, mm-hmm. so that's basically how the group got started, and I think it's it's. You know, it's it's had its ups and downs, and and then uh, I, like any any group goes, and then, but I do, um, well, I did keep the group pretty small, about two hundred people, um, which is small for a Facebook group. You know, uh-huh, there's some groups uh-huh. like thousands of people, so uh, I kept it small, very manageable, um, and then uh, you know we do have regular mixers, um, you know, again before COVID, so uh, so yeah. everybody actually got together and everybody kind of knew you know, actually met face face to face. So you really created a good sense of community, uh, yeah. which I which I think, you know, in a way, watch a lot of people grow up in that group. Uh, yeah, I know. Everyone's career kind of, you know, you know, everyone's took career off. keeps going, took off on the, on the help that everybody got in that group, so which is good. No, totally. And we all like re- refer each other. And I went to the last event and it's a great community. So that's, that's really... Yeah. That's really cool that you did that and it just grew and grew and just everyone got better. It is kind of interesting to see everyone grow and like everyone being successful. Yeah. And I, I, I went mean, to the last mixer. It's so fun to see everyone. Yeah. And it's still nice to see people, you know, because uh, US, you know, uh, the rate for small business failure is it's, it's uh, half of business close within the first five years. Yeah. Small business. And that's even higher for creatives, like for uh, freelancers. Um so, you know, it's really nice to see the same people in there after 10 years, people are still shooting. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like us. <laughs> yeah, like 10 years later, 12 years, they're still shooting, and, which, is, which is really good to see. So, Yeah, so I wanted to wait to ask this question, but I, I just have to ask it. But, like, how did you develop your, your film, like, high-end style? Like, where did that all come from? You could start, like, back yeah, in, like, where so you started from photography. Let me start way I know, later. I was going to say so, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when I first started, it's just like everybody else. And now, now, like, when I first started, there was no Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> there was no Pinterest. Uh, Facebook was barely starting getting more popular. Uh, so this was before social media. And when, you know, it was really difficult for you to, like, follow a photographer. Because uh, mm-hmm. back then, you literally have to go on their website. You had to check their blogs. You have to subscribe to their RSS feed. I don't remember that. So, um, <laughs> so that's kind of how you had to do it to really know, you know, really check out other people's work. It's not like today you get on your phone. There's like ten million photos you can just look, you know, scroll through. Um, so when I first started, it definitely took a while to kind of hone in on my style and my background in architecture. I was an architect before. Oh, that's that. right. I knew that. I have a degree in architecture. Uh, so I incorporated a lot of architecture elements uh, mm. into my into my photos, and that's kind of what made me different in the beginning that's kind of what set me apart uh so i kind of found my niche and i hone in on it so i remember when i used to um you know in- interview with clients i would say like hey your venue is really cool like you will want an architect to document this right like I- i'll tell them you know basically hey if you hire me i have the i have the education i have the eye to incorporate your unique venue into your photos 
Wow. And that really, really sold um sold me to a lot of clients where they like, oh yeah, no, you're right. So um so in the beginning of my my career, I did a lot of like what we call big epic shots, right? Like, you know, your clients like that small, yeah, you, know, like, yeah. you just do a lot of environment. Um which high which hit one of my biggest insecurity back then, which was posing. I didn't know how to pose my clients, mm. right? And then so like when I do big photos, like it doesn't matter because you can't see the face anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, so, and so back then that's kind of really how I did it. But then after a while it became um, kind of like, hey, you know, you need to start posing your clients. So <laughs> you can't be, every shot can be far away. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, so I got, so, you know, so I, I've always liked film photos, but I didn't know they were actual film. So I'm sure everybody knows who Jose Villa is, who's gone on to become the the, the greatest, yep. the goat of all time for uh-huh. wedding photography. Um, so I started, you know, I looked at his work. I didn't I actually didn't know I didn't know he shot film. Uh, I just like really liked the aesthetic of it. But more importantly, I like the feeling that he gave me when I looked mm. at his photos. I couldn't at the time I couldn't really articulate why I liked the photos or why it made me feel good. Uh-huh. Um, but I just remember looking at his photos, just like, man, this makes me feel so calm. This makes me feel like, you know, not, not overly excited. It doesn't make me like, you know, it, I just love the peace, feeling. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, yeah. I feel like a peace. On it. I, there's like a gentle sweetness to his photos and which uh-huh. what I really, really like. Oh. And I was like, what the hell is he doing that I'm not doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I started studying his work and uh, among other stuff, you know, other photographers that kind of sh- has the same, same aesthetic. And I realized, well, first of all, he shot film. And of course I was like, okay, I'm going to shoot film so I can, my photos can look like him. Then I start shooting film and I realized, no, it's more than just shooting film. Um, so it's about the mood, it's about the 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 emotion he captures, it's about the posing, it's about everything. Um, so I started studying his work I really intensely and eventually I kinda cracked the code, I guess. Like I yeah. figured out what he was I figured out but it took like years for me to do this. And remember, this was before you know, social media like he didn't post that much. He didn't post uh-huh. that much uh, mm-hmm. on his on his uh, website or blog. So I had to like really study it. Um Wow. You know, so, so that's kind of my style started changing uh, when I started when I started shooting film. This this has to be like seven to eight years ago. So, I shot digital for about three years, and uh-huh. then after that, I went hybrid. Basically, I shot both digital and film. Um, and then a couple of years later, I um, I switched to almost exclusively film because I just like the way it looks uh, and the way in you know the way it kind of it, it forced me to be a in my opinion forced me to be a better photographer. Because everything became so intentional when I was shooting. Because for well, first, it's expensive, um, and second, I only get sixteen shots on one roll of film, so I have to really like make it count. So I started to preconceive the image in my head before I start shooting. Uh, in comparison to digital, I feel like I was sh- I was I was, you know, shooting and then looking at the photos, like see what I caught. I want to be able to see the photos before I take it. Oh um, yes. Uh-huh. So, which is what film has kind of forced me to do, mm-hmm. and which I still do to this day. Um, uh-huh. I really feel like it just made me, you know, preconceive a shot, preconceive a scene before I take the photo, which in turn made me a better photographer. So that's kind of how my that. style has changed throughout the years. I mean, I look, I go back, look at my stuff from, you know, eight, ten years ago. I mean, they weren't, uh, they weren't terrible because I mean, I people pay me for it, <laughs> but, but it's just not what I would do today. Yeah. And I feel like my work, uh, so one thing I, I do keep pushing myself is the level of refinement of my work. I, I, I keep pushing my, myself to refine my work every year. Just like, okay, how do you do this one thing better? How do you just change the, the mood of this one pose better? Like I, mm-hmm. I spent a year trying to figure out hand holding. Oh, <laughs> like, how to, like how to hold hands, like, in, you know, in photos and what, like what different holding hand, different style holding hands and what kind of, feeling does it evoke and oh, then you become this thing this breathing exercise thing i have my clients do and that oh, just changed the mood of the photos yeah so all this thing took wow. you know, just, just studying and i but every time i do i figure something out like this it continues to refine my work um and you know again it allows me to keep charging more and more because i feel like you know the higher you go in pricing the more your clients are gonna expect uh, certain things from you, right? Obviously, they expect something that's a little different. Otherwise, why would they pay yeah. you know, this kind of money for something everybody else can do? Um, oh, so, so yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of how my style has evolved over the years. Right now, it's definitely more fine art portraiture. 
Yeah. Um, it's very natural, very organic. Um, I don't, uh, I, I post all my clients. And one thing I do tell them is like, hey, listen, I don't, I'm not going to make you do something you normally wouldn't do. Uh-huh. Uh, I just look, I just make it look much prettier. Yeah, yeah. When you do it. So, <laughs> you look- which t- That's so interesting. So, I love how you use like your architectural brain and your, um, you know, your background to like have people pose and like hold hands. And that's kind of like the way you think. And I like what you said about like using your background, like architecture. And that would be like your woo factor, your Jeremy Chow factor, your value proposition. Like, um, and you told clients when you first started, like, hey, I'm architecture and I could implement like these architectural like elements to your wedding or your engagement shoot. And that was kind of like your selling point. Um, and for me, like I, I danced my whole life. I'm not good or anything, but I danced like in high school and college yeah. and I did ballet. So I felt like that was one of my selling points too when I first started. And I would tell people, hey, I've been dancing my whole life. So I know how to pose you. And I know like there you go. How, yeah. how you shouldn't have double chins and skinny arms yeah. and all that kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. So that's kind of interesting. Like it's, the it's lines, ways you the can lines. sell yourself when you just start. So it's a good tip for the audience. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one thing I do tell my, uh, my, especially on workshop attendees, like, Hey, look, there's something different. There's something unique about you. And that's why you need to sell. Uh, otherwise you just the same as everybody else. Like what people only pay more for something that's different. Right? Yeah. Like we don't pay more for like a fast, food burger i mean it's the same as they were you know it's the same uh-huh, uh-huh. um but if we go to a different restaurant it's a different experience like a more expensive you know it's still a burger but it's a different experience and we tend to pay more for it and it's because it's different and so yeah so dance is definitely a great background because you know you know the lines of the body yeah. you know the movement. Uh-huh. um that's actually i know quite a few photographers that used to be dancers and they all they 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 do this. Do they also, <laughs> yeah, which is I mean I wish I knew understand how like body parts move. <laughs> I don't you know. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. So I guess we will go into our hot topic. Um, tell us about the hot topic today. It perfectly like alludes to it and why you chose this hot topic. Yeah. So one of the one of the things I feel like a lot of people uh, photographers that they kind of get stuck on, especially when they're at the level. Uh, they're kind of, they, you know, they've been doing this for a few years now they're like in the middle of the market, uh, which is what I call like the pricing dead zone, like in the mm, market, uh-huh. that's like where all the photographers go, uh, their careers, a figure they speaking, they go to die a painful death, uh-huh. like in this, in this pricing <laughs> zone, in, the, in, the, totally. in, the, in the middle, and they never get out of that mid range market. And it's just a painful place to come. Oh, wow. Um, and I feel for, for photographers to get out of that price range. Once you've mastered, obviously, the technical aspect of stuff, right? Like, you know how to expose, you know how to edit, you know how to shoot with the correct white balance and all that. Once you master that, so, okay, so what's next? What's going to make you stand out, right? As, I, ultimately, as photographers, our work has to be good. I mean, you can say, you know, the personality, is marketing, yes, all that matters. But yes, at the end of the day, your work has to be good. Uh-huh. Um, so um, so I was, what I was going to talk about is, is when you curate, how do you curate your work to attract a high end client, the high end clientele? Um, and that's that in itself, it's kind of an, an art form. Because again, I, w- once you've mastered the technical aspect of photography, you need to concentrate on the mood. Like, like how does your image make people feel? Uh, right? uh-huh. That's kind of the next step. Because uh, everybody, I mean, honestly, nowadays with the mirrorless camera out, it's, it's, it's face tracking, like, Everybody can shoot a 1.2 tack sharp. Everybody can do it now, right? Yes. So like, it doesn't make you different just because your background's blurry now. Yeah. You know, because back then, back then that was kind of the thing. Like, oh my god, your bouquet is so good. Your background, uh-huh. you know, so pretty. <laughs> but literally, not everybody can do it. Um, so now it becomes like, okay, so what the what's the mood your your image is generating? Like, how does people re- respond to an image on an emotional level? Oh, and I feel like, I like to get, and I feel like get out to get out that price range in the middle. You need to really focus on that. Like, okay, so you need to you need to um, any kind of high end brand will tell you their their goal is not to sell a product. Their goal to is to appeal to the client's emotional need. Ooh. whatever whatever that is, right? Ooh. Whatever that is. So for weddings, um, and then you got you kind of have to know your clients. Um, like what what are the emotional need I can feel? Because again. Everybody can shoot a nice photo now. Everybody can. <laughs> so, yeah. so what makes your photos different? How how do you how how your how are your clients gonna react to your images? That's that's what sets the sets my work apart. 
Yeah, I think just trying to like, you know, relate to what you're trying to say is, you know, now I've been making reels and my style has always been kind of more on the fun, goofy side. Um, so, you know, even when I make my reels, my, my last reel was about like a dinosaur and a panda. And maybe my clientele is not like <laughs> high end, but they still will pay like, you know, five to eight K. Um, yeah. So it, it's still it's still like when people are like a fun couple, they're like, oh, we'll hire Carissa because it's like fun or funny. And so every time yeah. I go to a wedding, I try to find something like funny or about it or like interesting. I think my last real, the real before that panda one was like we were on scooters. So like the electric scooters, um, the birds. Yeah. So something like unique, but I guess like it taps into like the hey, let's have fun emotion. And for you, I think it taps into like this, like this love, like how you said it was like this gentle gentleness about it. And like how you wouldn't put people in certain situations that they would normally not be in. Like you don't want them to feel uncomfortable. And I feel like you just like perfectly place everything. Like it's beautifully curated, but it's also very authentic. So it's interesting that you like, you're talking so much about emotion. I love that tip. Yeah. So, so, you know, there's not, you know, there's not a right or wrong way to, as long as you're booking clients who are, who are booking because they like you. I mean, I think that's all that matters at the end of the day. Um, and I do, I do know a lot of photographers that like you, they're, they're, they're fun. They're all going and they do let that personality come through in their photos. And not to say I'm a stiff, I'm just like I'm, yeah, I'm, you're super I think I'm a funny guy. Um, <laughs> but my, I think my in my work, it's a very, I would say it's more serious looking. Like I would say uh, a lot of times it's more editorial looking. Uh-huh. Um, so I definitely don't do like the, uh, you know, the the dark and moody, uh, the, the the dark and moody, or like the goofy poses. You know, like the the little yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, and I and I know some people can pull that off. It's just not me. And then also, there's some photographers where. They were like, you know, pretend this is the last time you're gonna see each other. He's going out uh, the war. I, like, I remember hearing you know, that. Like, they're trying to make their clients cry and stuff. I I'm like, I, you know, again, that's just not me. But if you're gonna get clients to pay for that, by all means, that's just not me. So I really hone in on the, I really hone in on the work that I like. Um, I feel like the work reflects who I am as a person, and then that it became, it becomes almost effortless because I'm not. Uh, faking it you know what i mean because that that's really the work i like for me personally that's the work i enjoy looking at that's enjoy i that's the work i enjoy um uh you know in my in my uh in my uh in my feed in my uh social media feed i, I like that kind of work um and i also you know look at a lot of renaissance painting and where you tend to be a more serious nature oh, like, interesting just not a lot of people like I mean, if you look at any Renaissance painting, there's not a lot of people like doing belly laughs. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, so it's definitely more, uh, you know, like kind of more demure, kind of control. I call it control emotions. You might. Oh it. yeah, I love that. But it's very subtle, and it's it's yeah, it's I mean, powerful, subtle but it's powerful. Yeah, I mean, at cool. the end of the day, it's wedding photo. You don't want to look sad, but like, <laughs> but, but, I, but I like it to look, you know, just kind of, you know, like more demure, more like control. Yeah, so. and what you said in the beginning, like peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. That was a great tip. That's a great tip for every brand out there, wedding professionals or non-wedding professionals, like kind of like sell um, something that appeals to their emotional need. That's really um, my job yeah. moment. Uh, take it away with number two. I feel like when you want to curate your work and you have to first know your clientele. Okay. Right? So I know the, so I can, I can tell you the specific clientele I go after, like the demographic, how much money they make, what kind of, what kind of professions they have. But like, you know, when I get a new client, I'm like, okay, are you a doctor or an accountant? Like, uh. <laughs> like you know, I like, I, I get pretty much the same clientele all the time. And uh-huh. it's amazing how consistent the personalities are. Yeah. Like, I feel my work appeals to a very specific type of people, right? Like they usually professional, they usually, you know, um, high income earners, they, they want, they, they know what they want and they don't mind spending money on it. Um, but they, they expect, you know, to receive what they paid for. Right. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. so the second, this, this, my second part will be like, really know your clientele. Okay. Like if you want to go, like, if you want to go high end, um, you have to know like what your clients like, right. For example, there's a specific uh, floral. There's a specific flower, a uh, leaf, I should say, a okay. green, greenery for for florals. Okay. You, you would never see that at a high end wedding. Okay. Never. Right? Okay. So, uh-huh. what if I get a wedding with that kind of floral? 
that one is not getting shown anywhere. Yes. Uh -huh. Because because I know a, a higher end clientele are going to look at it. They're going to be like, oh, why is this here? Right. Um, so if I'm appealing to a higher end clientele, I need to speak the language. I need to know like, hey, look, this is, you know, this is what they look for. This is um, uh, they, they want to be able they want to, to know Jeremy can capture a high end wedding. Right? OK, so and let me back up just a little bit. So my definition of a high end client is quite different than most people. OK, my definition of a high end client is the one that pays my fee. Okay. Right. So what is like, your fee? <laughs> right now it's not ten thousand. Yes, yeah, that's what I thought. So my definition is the client that pays my fee is my high end client, right? So like for example, I had a a client which uh, hired me for her backyard micro wedding for six people, right? But she paid my full fee, and her sister did a flower, and then her like they had that her mom cooked, and you know basically uh -huh. like I was the 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 sole high expense for the wow. wedding, right? But it would be wrong for me to say they are not my high-end client. Uh -huh. So for me, again, high-end client is just the one that pays all my fees. Like whatever I ask for, that's what they pay. Then that's my high-end client, right? Um, and then I, I have, and again, I came back from a wedding in Mexico where it's like 150 people, like the budget's about 500,000 and above. So like it's, there's, there, it's just all different. Um, but um, again, that's how I define my, my high-end client. So anyways. So going back to what I was saying before, so if you want to attract a certain specific type of crowd, you have to get into their heads. You have to, excuse me, you have to basically do your market research. Uh, you have to know like, okay, I'm I'm going after this very specific niche of clients. Where do they shop? What do they buy? What do they like? What you know? What do they wear? Like what their personality is like? You have to really get into their heads. Okay. And and one of the the uh, the the best advice I've received is that um, you can't look at money the way you Look at money. Uh -huh. You can't, yeah, you can't look at the way other people spend money the way you spend money. Because uh -huh. we all, because I didn't grow up in a rich family. Like, we weren't rich growing up by any stretch of imagination. We're very middle class. Uh -huh. um, and then we actually immigrated to America. Was, you know, my parents struggled a little bit. So I, like, you know, we, I didn't grow up rich. So to say I relate to clients who, you know, who were rich, like, no, uh -huh. I can't relate to them. I just can't. But I know, I but I know how to speak a language. I know, I know how to. Oh, um, uh -huh. I know what they like because uh -huh. I, I deal with them so much. Like I uh -huh. know exactly what they like. Um, so um, with that kind of clients, you know, you had just had to, you know, really carry your work to show what will appeal to them. Interesting. What was that movie that won all the awards? Like the Korean one where it was like the poor and the parasite. The, oh yeah, parasite. Yeah. <laughs> It reminds me of like the poor, um, the guy like he had to like talk like he was rich or the girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The the girl pretended to be like a tutor or like yeah, a yeah. English <laughs> she was so good. Teacher. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I was like, no way. So, so you you do. I mean, and uh, you know, just as kind of side note, I think a lot of people, you know, when they first started, they're like, oh, I want to be best friends with my clients and all that. Like, after you've been done, after you've been doing this for a while, you realize you can't. Your clients are not like you. They have their own different, you know, priorities. They have their own different lives and all that. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm I'm definitely friendly with my clients, but yeah. I'm like I'm not I'm not getting invited to kids' birthday parties. Yeah, <laughs> and totally. I I actually purposely stay away from my client. I, I create a buffer between myself and my clients per Me too. on purpose. Me too. Um, it just it makes everything easier. I mean, yeah. there of course there are clients where I feel more connected with and i don't want to be friends with them after the wedding's over uh -huh. um like everything delivered they're happy <laughs> totally. so, but before that i know <laughs> yeah it's interesting so we got to do tip number three fast but i wanted to ask this question um how did jeremy chow get so bougie it was it from <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> I'm not. My shirt. This shirt's fifty dollars. I know. That's what I'm saying because you're like the most down to earth guy, wearing you know your your yeah, nice like <laughs> shirt. But so was it coming from like the architectural field, and you just like wanted this high end client? Was it because of oh, how, how did I go after this type of yeah, client? Yeah. Okay. Like, oh, okay. That's a different question. Okay. Yeah. So, no, that's, that's, a, that's a question. Okay. So here's 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 how that happened. I was shooting weddings, like, I was charging 2000 2500 right? Like everybody else, right? So, uh -huh. like, two years in, dude, I was booking, like, I was booking fast. I was shooting, yeah. like, 30, 40 weddings a year, right? And, but I was twenty five three thousand dollars $3,000. And then every wedding I went to, every wedding I booked, I was the wedding planner. I was the, the DJ. Like, you know, oh. I, had to, I, had to write my, I had to write my clients a time. I actually have a whole email template set up because of this because I used to have to do all this, right? So I had to. I used to have to set my clients a timeline. Uh -huh. I used to have to send them the uh, the family photo list. 
I used to like uh, first dance I had. I remember I had to go to a DJ and say, "Hey, you need to clear out everybody on the dance floor." Like he yeah. forgot because he's like the bride's cousin or something, right? <laughs> and then my first wedding, I was helping a couple setting up centerpieces because oh they ran out God. of time because oh. they didn't have the floors, right? Yeah. So after you do it thirty times a year, <laughs> yeah, that's too you're much. Like, you're like, this is not my job. Like, oh I my god, hate it. What is like? If I had to do this at every wedding, because I want to shoot photos, I don't, I don't like, you know, like the, the bride has a tear on her dress. I had to like get like shout and like try to clean. It. I'm like, dude, it's not my job, right? <laughs> so after after you do that one too many wedding, I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> So I need. What do I do here? Like I still like shooting weddings, but I don't like shooting this kind of wedding. Uh huh. Uh huh. So I decide. Okay, I need to raise my prices because, like, yeah. Back then, none of my clients had wedding planners, and then so I raised my prices and started having wedding planners. I remember shooting a wedding. There were like five wedding planners there, right? Somebody was following the bride's mom. Somebody was following the bride, Whoa. and there's one that's in charge with a clipboard and the headphones. Yeah. And then I was like, this is amazing. Like I, li- I went and did my work, and that's all I had to do. So I was like, okay, this is the kind of wedding I want to shoot, right? I don't want to shoot one where I'm I'm everything to everybody. I just I'm a photographer. That's all I do. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, so slowly, just you know, just raise my prices and to try to get out that that dead zone in the middle. Oh, and it eventually it became a game to see how far how far I can push it. Uh, good job. <laughs> so I just love kind of that became mindset. This, yeah, it kind of became this thing where like, okay, Jeremy, if you're gonna do this, you, you're gonna try to be the best at it. You don't want to be mediocre. Yeah. You don't want to be like you know, just like everybody else, like how far can you push this, right? Uh-huh. And that's just, you know, just my mentality. So, um, and I know I'm nowhere near like the top of the game or anything like that, but I feel you like... Are. No. Totally, no, there's, come there's on. Don't people, be bashful. <laughs> I'm modest. Definitely people, there's definitely people way up up there. I mean, I, I, I feel like I'm maybe... Like pricing wise, maybe top ten percent. Yeah. The first, but I'm, there's definitely the five percent that I'm trying to get. So, uh, anyway, so my point is, I always set up goals for myself, try to hit like the next goal. What's the next goal? What's the next goal? So wow. now I hit ten thousand. So okay, how do I hit twenty thousand? Right? Oh. So like that's kind of like the next goal now. Dang, you're so awesome. I'm so Let's inspired. <laughs> Before I forget to say, Jeremy, shout out to your email templates and everyone can oh. purchase them for $70, but I still use them for the past like 10 years and they're the nice. best. <laughs> yeah. Because you do, you were the planner. Like you said, Hey, here's your pre timeline. This is yeah. what you expect three months before you map it all out, clean the room. And right, you really, right, right. you really helped me in my photography career. Here's an email template for the vendors and after the wedding, you know, to get on the vendor list and yeah, yeah, yeah. It really, really helped me. Those, so it those really are changed all, my life. Yeah. Those are all the email templates I, I, I used, like every single one of them. Yeah, and then, too. you know, <laughs> when you get, <laughs> well, it's good. Good. That's the point. Uh, it really makes the, 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 um, uh, communication streamlined and makes you look very professional because uh-huh. like, you have everything dialed in before the wedding. Um, but you know, right now I, 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 use, I still use, I mean, I don't use all the templates. I still use some uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, because right now, if I send out a timeline, I'm stepping on the planner's toes now. Mm, right? so yeah, uh-huh. the stuff like that, I just don't uh-huh. do it anymore. And the, okay. the family photo list, I still do it. Uh, uh-huh. As far as like cleaning the room, the planner already got it. So, yeah, like, I don't. Just, uh-huh. There's 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 modification to what I'm doing now, but uh, but no, I'm glad to hear that. that that's yeah, amazing. it's so good and. Yeah, everyone should purchase it. It's seventy dollars. It's on your website, and you could go find him on Instagram too. But yeah, yeah. you have to have <laughs> okay. it. It'll Thanks change the, the game. Okay, <laughs> take it away with tip number three, real fast, and we'll go into rapid fire questions and learn more about you, yeah. like you find Jeremy. Yeah. So number three, I, I, th- and this one's gonna be, this one just comes with training. So this, the third one, it, everything matters, right? So when okay. I say that, it's. Every little thing matters, like in your photos. So if I walk in the room and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, this is kind of what my my what I do when I get in a room. I go in a room, I find a corner that I like, right? And then like in the hotel room, for, for example, getting ready, I find a corner that I like. I go, in, I literally clean out everything in that in that corner that I don't want in my photo. Okay. So everything in the photo is intentional, right? Okay. So I've removed paintings from the wall. I've removed, excuse me, I've um, um, um. Uh, lamps, uh, telephones, yeah. TVs. Like, uh, I throw on my back on a wedding because I try to move a table. <laughs> <laughs> so when I go in, I move everything. I clean out everything in the background. Everything. Like, there's no trash anywhere. So if you look at my photos, like one thing people always say, like, oh my god, your weddings are just so clean. Like, uh-huh, why does it uh-huh. look? Why does it look so clean? I'm like, because I clean everything before, I, you know, what before I start shooting. Um, and in my photos, I, I tend to shoot a really clean background, right? Because I know with my clients especially the hiring clients, like every little thing matters in the sense that 
like Jeremy, why didn't you move that trash can in the back? Like Jeremy, there's the a water bottle in the back. Did you not see that? Or like it becomes even more, um, it becomes a little more uh, uh, intense in the sense that okay, so in a photo where the bride has this, or the groom has this, this really intense look at the at her at his bride, uh-huh. and the bride is like, you know, so like the mood doesn't match, right? So the mood is not match anymore. So uh-huh. I, so right now it becomes that like okay, how do I get the mood to match, right? So when I say little things, it's it's literally going to like the whole the entire branding, right? And oh, also okay. uh, email templates, one of them, uh, I'm constantly tweaking my website. There can be no holes in my branding, right? There's still holes there. So that's why I, I got to keep, keep keep tweaking it. But it's definitely a lot less now, a lot harder to find now. Um, once in a while, people say, like, you're like, hey, you missed the comma here. Or like, hey, the format is a little off here. Uh-huh. So, and I was just going to fix it, right? Um, so especially with the high-end clientele, I, I, I realized that they, they pay attention to all the little tiny details. and it might not be something that's a deal, like one thing might not be a deal breaker, but if you, it's like the, the totality of things, right? If you keep, if you keep having mistakes, what well, I call them mistakes, uh-huh. um, like I didn't remove a tra- uh, water bottle in the background and I should uh-huh. have done it. Um, if you have more of enough of the mistakes, it starts to, to dilute your brand. Uh-huh. Right. So if you look at very high end photographers, there's not a single mistake in okay. any photo. So, uh, um, so every little thing matters. Uh, and, and in like, you know, your invitation, if you're doing a flat, like it has to be perfectly straight. Yeah. You can't be crooked. Uh-huh. Yeah. If you're shooting a table, like, so there's another thing I do for my clients where I go shoot a reception. I actually, if I don't like the way it's set up, like a table scape, uh-huh. I actually grab everything and set up my own vignette. <laughs> uh, uh, so that way that, that one photo becomes like the shot for the details. And obviously when you shoot like a white room shot, it doesn't matter. But when I shoot like a one detail shot, I move everything tighter so I can create the, what, the look that I want. Um, and my clients appreciate that. They're like, you know, because I feel they hire me for the eye for detail that where yeah. I can make the wedding look as pretty as it possibly wow. can. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to recap real fast and we'll go into rapid yeah. fire questions. Sure. So, you know, how to get high end clients. So, number one is um, your work has to like be emotional, and that's how you're going to sell at an emotional level. And number two, you have to know your clientele. Um, it's funny you said doctor accountants because I get a lot of doctor accountants, but our yeah. are so different, but you know, we have to know their personalities and how to speak their language. Right. And then, um, number three is everything matters. So perfectionist Jeremy Chow. And, you know, I was at a wedding last week at Orange Hill and, you know, the getting ready area was so small. So I took them to, yeah, like a corner of the reception hall with good light and a pretty like, um, stone background and did all my photos there. So and I definitely now, you know, doing this for 12 years, I look for the water bottles and I look for the mess because yeah. I don't want the extra work with two kids, like two babies. So I <laughs> Photoshop not, it all yeah, later. <laughs> yeah, it's I can't do yeah. Photoshop anymore. Um, right. So, yeah, those are all great tips. And let's just go into rapid fire questions. They're a little bit shorter, but and you gave so much for this question already. Like you answered it in many, many different ways. But what's your biggest like heck yes strategy? Uh. As far as booking clients go, yeah, I, I think how does just be nice to the vendors? <laughs> oh, yeah, keep it simple, be, dude. Yeah, be, be nice to the vendors. I mean, yeah. I think all the other all the other things are kind of given. Like you got to do good work, and you got to yeah, yeah. work. I think all those things just given. But like I being like nice to be nice to vendors and photo- fellow photographers, that's like a huge thing. Yeah, um, and and let me define what that what that means. Being nice, like don't be difficult on the day. Don't be a diva. Uh, we all <laughs> work together as a team. Um, when people ask for photos, like, and I hear this, I see these questions all the time. Like, why is this even a question? People are like, oh, the planner asked me for a photo. I want to watermark it. I want to send, I want them to sign uh, a document yeah. saying that they, they no, will no, credit no. me. I'm like, no, 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 just, no, 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 no. I, I feel like the longer you've done this, the less you care. Like, totally, like, like do whatever like, you want. Yeah. Here's a full gallery, take it. Ah, uh, totally. I'm the same <laughs> yeah. way. Here's a full gallery, just grab whatever you want. I don't yeah. care. Like, if you want to create it, be great. If you don't, at least I know, like, you like my photos enough to share it, right? Oh, um, I know. I'm with you. I mean, I, I send an initial email, just like, hey, this is for your use. I appreciate if you, if you, you know, tag me, but I don't follow, you know, I don't. Me too. I don't, I'm not be a jerk about it. So, um, and one thing is really always be thankful with the with the vendors you work for because mm. I do a ton of style shoots, and people are always like, "Oh my god, the photographer's amazing." I'm like, and I always I always tell people like, "No, no, 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 I'm just a guy with a camera. I didn't put the flowers together. Uh... I didn't do the styling. I didn't do the hair and makeup. Yes, I shot photos, but like 
the whole team's behind it, right? Aww. So um, a lot of times when my photos get reposted, I will actually go in, like if I get tagged, only I get tagged, I would go, I was like, no, here's the entire team. You need to tag wow. the entire team. Um, and you do that consistently for 10 years. You, you start building up a reputation. People like, they like to work with you because um, they know you always got, you always give credit. Uh, um, and one thing is, it's honestly just, you know, you have to kind of just always be humble, uh, especially without the vendors. Like, you know, you think you charge a lot. There's people charge at 10 times what I charge. You know what I mean? Like, I think Jose starts at $50,000 now. It's just like, it's stupid. Like yeah. it's, it's just stupid amount of money. So like, you know, I started at 10, it, it was, it's nowhere near the top. So there's always room to grow. Um, so it's, it's one of the things where just be, I, mean, but I think being nice to all the vendors comes with being humble as well. Like just don't think you're better than everybody. You just, we're just photographers. I take photos. That's it. Like I'm not, you know, <laughs> I just take photos. <laughs> That's so nice, Jeremy. What is your favorite wedding you travel to? It's got to be Italy. So okay. uh, I've done quite a few Italy. So now the biggest difference in Italy weddings uh, is this. Um, they like to eat and they take a lot of time <laughs> to eat. It's like literally a two-hour dinner, right? So you vendors, you get your own table and there's like five bottles of wine on the table because like drinking in Italy is not a thing. Like even kids drink wine in Italy. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and, the, and then, you know, and then, you know how it is that like, people don't like, photos of themselves eating while they're eating so like doing dinner we're just a little chill with the vendors and we'll just you know be, you get a nice little break and Aww. a lot of times clients will come and say hi and all that and they don't expect any photos during that time and you know and plus i mean it's freaking italy i mean you can't yeah. go wrong you can take them anywhere it'll be pretty <laughs> yeah my favorite wedding was croatia we were drinking mm. wine like taking breaks so it's yeah any, any european wedding it's yeah the culture is just completely different like here i feel like at the end of a 10 hour day, I think I just want to die. Like, it's just like <laughs> your body takes such a hit. Totally. Um, but, but, you know, Europe, you actually just you slow down. You actually, you know, enjoy your day. So, ah, I love that. Okay. Last question. And then we'll tell people where to find you. Um, yeah. It's kind of an interesting question, but what would be your strategy to go from 10K to 20K? Oh, God. Charge. So, so yeah. So, it at this point, nobody's finding me off google at this point right people just yeah. random googling searching me it's not gonna book me they're, they're just <laughs> it's been like that for a while but you know when i was like 7k or 8k people still could do it but 10k above it's all planners now all planners right so to go from 10k to 20k you gotta again you gotta work you gotta work with the right people know the right people okay um like right now i have i have planners basically like hey but client the i just booked a few weddings of 15 or seventeen thousand, basically planners are, hey i have a client this is a budget can you do it yeah okay you're booked right wow so it's it's, it's and I, if i have five of those planners like i'm done right i'm, I'm good yeah <laughs> um so right now it's it's it, it just kind of uh finding you know working the right planners um and also my i want to continue to improve my work so there's definitely a, a trajectory where i want my uh, my work to go so like in the beginning it was very <laughs> architectural inspired and it becomes film that's fine out portraiture but right now, I'm concentrating a lot on mood right now. Okay. And the next level of that is I want to get very good into storytelling. Oh, um, you're so good already. So, well, it, you can always get better. That's, yeah, that's what I'm for sure. So, like, so I, I want to keep controlling, like, you know, learn how to control the mood, really get that mood out of my clients, um, and then just tell a better story on on the on the wedding day. And I don't think that – I think ultimately that's kind of what we do with storytellers. Um, but how do we tell the story? How do What makes your – storytelling different than everybody else's right uh interesting those are so cool i love this conversation tell everyone where to find you and tell them the audience how to sign up for your course uh yeah so they can um well instagram is probably the best one jeremy child photography oh, at jeremy child photography my website is my name jeremy child.com uh, there's a link for my website to my workshop website which okay. has the email templates and also the online course and all that. You can all link it on jamieshaw.com. There's a little drop down on the bottom, uh, yeah. on the top. So it's for, for, for photographers. Uh -huh. um, any kind of workshop announcement will come through Instagram. Um, Jamie Shaw Photography. There's an, also not on Jamie Shaw Workshop, uh, at Jamie Shaw Workshop as well. So that's pretty much where people can find me. Cool. And if you ever want to like team up for anything, let me know if you need someone yeah. to talk about like mastering the sales call or anything yeah, like cool. that let Perfect. me know um Perfect. but yeah let's keep in touch for sure we don't want to go so long without connecting yeah it's been crazy 
it's just, I mean, and social media is kind of weird because like you see people on social media, you feel like, oh, I, I know what they're up to, but yeah. no, you really don't. <laughs> yeah. You just never see them, so. But it was so good to catch up. And every time I've, you know, seen you in the past, you're always super fun to talk to and easygoing. Yeah, so that's up. why you have, you know, this big business of, you know, people <laughs> wanting to connect with you all the time. Yeah, so. good, well, good catching up. Yeah, during Christmas, maybe do a little mixer or something. I'll see you there. <laughs>